Beautiful ladies joining us today. We have Jennifer, I'm um, right, Jennifer Adiki J, the CEO of Native Boca Restaurant and Wonder Bakery. Welcome, it's nice to have you. Thank you. It's nice to have you. We also have a former Anyangu, the creative director, Odogo. Nice. Okay, Ogodo, it's nice to have you. On. Thank nice you. To, nice. Okay, let's start off from the first and most important thing why we're here. How do you start and grow a business in Nigeria? Hmm? Yeah, you, yeah, you can start. Well, starting a business, to be honest, the process of starting a business is usually three-pronged, meaning that first you conceptualize, the process of conceptualizing, then you go to the next stage of execution, and then the final stage is managing. So conceptualizing is where your creative ability comes in. So you have an idea or you have a dream, and then you start to nurture it. You nurture it by executing. That's bringing that dream to life. And so in the execution process is where all your technical competencies come to play. And then finally, when the business starts, how to manage your staff, how to manage your processes to make sure that you get your desired results. So those are the three basic processes or stages of starting and creating and sustaining a business. Okay, I don't know if you have, if you are thinking in the same line with her or you have your own... Uh, yeah, what she says is 100% um, uh, true. You know, the only thing I would add is for me, I would rather you start with something you're passionate about. Okay. You know, you're safer because if you're passionate about something, then, you know, you, you know, there's that zeal. Do you understand? Your baby, just like having a baby, no matter what wrong your baby does, you see your baby, True. you know. So when you start with something you're passionate about, you know, then you're not worried. Even when you, you, come, you come in contact with problems and all that and all that, you're, because something you're passionate about, you're not necessarily looking at the clock, you're not necessarily looking at, you're not on any timer, yes. you just go. So the process is on point you know, but it's also safer to start with your passion. That is key. Okay, passion and also the processes yes. that you have mentioned. Yes. Now, you both are business people in yes. Nigeria. Let me come start with you. How is the business environment in Nigeria for you? You have run a business for some time now, a considerable number, um, a considerable number of years. Yes. How, has, how would you describe the business environment in Nigeria? Well, to be honest with you, there are always challenges in business. You know, by definition, the definition of entrepreneurship is how to start a business amidst whatever risks yes. you have to face and get your product out there and make a profit out of it. And so there would always be risks. Yes, in Nigeria, I agree with you that the challenges are a bit more inundating. And that's because you're not only having to deal with the, the, the startup process, you have to deal with doing certain things for yourself that unfortunately the government might not be able to provide for you consistently. For instance, when you're starting a business, you have to think about how to create alternative power supply for yourself. You have to think about how to create water supply for yourself and so many other things which in other 21st century economies, Real you know, point. that are thriving, they don't have to go through all that. So yes, the, the business environment in Nigeria is quite challenging, but that is not a reason to discourage entrepreneurs from going into it. Some people have done it, some people have been successful at it. And so when I teach entrepreneurship, I teach people to be determined. I teach people perseverance because those challenges would always come. Yeah. You know, challenges are what make life more interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life more meaningful. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so challenges would always come, but mm -hmm. you can still be successful at what you do. Amid the challenges. Yeah, yeah before we go deeper, the chief, chief mention of conceptualization. So it is, is it factual to say that the problem with the business environment in Nigeria so far for not thriving is poor conceptualization from entrepreneurs? But because I've seen some businesses that actually have good ideas and they're pushing it ahead, but they're not working out. I don't know if, if, if we can say a conceptualization is a problem. Well, I say yes. A lot of people, what I notice, a lot of people start up businesses because Miss mm -hmm. A is doing mm -hmm. that business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jennifer mm -hmm. just bought a car. Mm -hmm. Guess what she's doing? Cooking. If a man just bought a car, guess what she's doing? Sewing. Why can't I do it? Probably have more money than Jennifer. Probably have more money than Ifoma. So. Look for the place, start up your business without any plan, with no passion. You mm -hmm. won't know what, how it's going to end up. Mm -hmm. It will crash. So, mm -hmm. working on, like she said, a plan, having a plan, definitely, you know, there's, you, there's a process. Think about it. Why do I want to do this? Do I really want to do this? What about when challenges come? Will I still be standing mm -hmm. or will I just crumble? Yeah. Do you understand? So, conceptualization is key because it, it helps you to create a balance. When the problems come, you're able to start, mm -hmm. yes, that's what it does, so it's, it's key. In addition to, sorry, one second, in addition to conceptualization, 
I always ask everyone who wants to start a business, mm. first question, is there a need mm. for what you want to do? Mm. Is important. there a need? Mm. Because business, so by definition, is supposed to balance problem mm. and solution. It's supposed to add value. Yes, yes. it's supposed to add value. So there's a, once there's a compelling mm. need for what you do, mm. one, two, and then you can appeal to the right target market. I think the sky is your limit. I mm. miss the challenges. Even when the challenges come, yes, you'll be knocked down, but mm. you won't be knocked out yes. because you're ready to persevere. There's mm. always a need for what you do. All you just need to do is just appeal to the right people and create a price plan that generally works. That generally works. Yes. Gotcha. Oh, you, yeah. you, you, you've, okay, you want to add something? Yes, I, I want to add something to what she said or, what she, or the question I was asked to her earlier in terms of the environment in which we find ourselves. I say... First thing first, I mean, this is just being plain and simple and yes. facing reality. It, it, the odds are against you. Yeah. You don't Nigeria. have in Nigeria. What you don't have light, constant light. I mean, tell me what business you run that you do not need power. Mm -hmm. We don't have it. Number one. So that's number one. Number two. What is, what are the odds that as a business owner you want to start a business you already have money for generator? Do you understand? So you have that working against. Then you also have. Lack of manpower. There are a lot of people looking for jobs, but very people that are trained to do specific jobs. Everybody is looking at the money. Everybody is looking at what are they going to pay me at that restaurant? What are they going to pay me in that fashion house? So nobody is coming equipped. So most times we are dealing with people that are supposed to know basic things. Mm -hmm. You want to serve somebody, wash your hands, be clean. Why do you have to put you in? I mean, you don't need a school to test. So everybody is in a hurry to get the money. Nobody is in a, nobody wants to take out the time to be able to train themselves, either by going through institution or even developing yourself. It's not even about schools. There are not a, a lot of schools, development schools. We only have proper schools to go and learn how to become medicine, yeah, but we don't have fashion schools, proper fashion schools. schools. Yeah. We do not schools. have professional yes. schools. Yes. So already you have all that. As a business person, I tell, I, first and foremost, I just tell you, listen, as an entrepreneur, you must face discouragement and failure. And these are part of the, the things process. you face. So the earlier you come to terms with it, it's not a pretty party. It's not a party where you come in and, you know, you expect your first million in one month. It's not going to happen. So how do you intend to work around those challenges? That is the key. Now, you mentioned development schools yes. and these schools that we have yeah. around that people can learn from. But I, I ha I've had the opportunity to interact with people. I know somebody that wanted to learn fashion. You're into fashion, mm. fashion design. Mm. And she went to one of these schools in Abuja here. Mm. And the price they called, the amount that was called, that was billed on her was, it was too much. Don't mm. you think that, is, that also contributes to why we have so many, we get to meet so many greenhorns that really cannot, they, excel. they mm. can't excel in that particular business field. Don't you think that also contributes to yeah, it? Yeah, that contributes. But the truth of the matter is because we do not have value, for professionals, for professions like what she's doing, what I'm doing, that's why you feel, how can I go and give somebody 300,000? Well, yes, we have evolved. To yes, have we have, but things. then again, has how do we see these people? Most times, when you see somebody that's probably a tailor, just you, you automatically you just do the math and say maybe she didn't go to school, she's a dropout. You say you're you unlike the developing <laughs> society where they get, they give them um, a platform, they give them, you know, they put them on the pedestal. So most times when people, it's not big, if, trust me, if they ask them to pay that same amount for med school, most of them will jump at it. After all, it's medicine, yes, it's a professional. Indeed. So mm -hmm. no, we have not got to that point where we see these things as real professions. Skills. As real yeah. skills. Yeah. skills. Yeah, just look at it as something you can just go and learn on the side. Hey, just going to meet that a lot to teach you. You understand? But there's a process. And that, like I always say, there are two sets of people. There's the skilled man and there's the entrepreneur. Do you want to be the skilled man, the tailor, or do you want to be a fashion designer? You can teach the fashion designer the skill, but it's difficult to teach the skilled man how to be the fashion designer. The fashion designer, the creative director, is the entrepreneur of the business. So definitely you must have managerial skills, just like what she mentioned, yeah, to run a successful she, business. She made a very good point about self-development. So on the issue of self-development, now there's a, there's, there, there's a passionate need now in Nigeria that fast money is the fastest thing to work on. So is there any hard way or are, are various businesses, are they peculiar to their own growth? Is there any general rule that says, okay, if you just apply this, this any business can apply this principle <laughs> and be, make to it? Be, <laughs> to be honest with you, there are no hard cut rules, mm. you know, because what you might do mm. and thrive, mm. she might do it and not thrive. Yes. So there are no hard cut rules. And that's why I always tell people, don't copy a product. Mm. Don't copy what he's doing mm. because you think he's doing well. Because even if you can copy the product, you might not be able to copy the process. Yes. When I started my business as well, I, I went into the food business. Yes, I had the passion. I went into the food business because I heard it was very lucrative. Mm. And I tried to copy what was available. Mm. And I failed. My first six months was woeful. Until I asked myself, oh my God, Jennifer, 
why don't you innovate? Why don't you do this your own way? Mm. And carve your own niche and create your own market. And as soon as I did that, I saw an exponential growth. Mm. I found what was lacking, what was needed, mm. and then do what you can do in an innovative way. Give people something that they've never seen before. Mm. It's that excitement, it's that your differentiator mm. that would keep people coming back. Yes. And also, in regards to the last question, I think the government has a role to play mm. in creating an enabling environment for the SMEs. Yes. The SMEs form the soul of every economy. Yes. For instance, we create the cushion effect for yeah, unemployment. Seven million of them in the country currently. We create how many of them are doing well? It's exactly. not about the numbers. Exactly. How many of them are generating profits exactly. to expand and to create jobs? I'm, I'm fortunate that yes, I have been able to empower, train my staff, mm. and I'm, I'm because I'm growing, mm. I'm employing more yes. people. I even Chain. have yes. graduates, Chain. graduates who work with me now, who earn salaries probably even more than their mates in the the, the civil service, and that's in because my business is thriving. So you can imagine if we had several businesses like mine, several SMEs like mine, if government could create the enabling environment for us to thrive, then we would we feel that unemployment shortfalls. In the, the pressure on the civil service, yeah. the pressure on the organized private sector will be less. And then when you have SMEs, a lot of people would intern. So the issue of going to get the requisite training from those yeah. skill acquisition yes. centers. I have a lot of interns who are working for me. She has a lot of interns who are working for her. They're gaining those skills. Mm. They go back to school and have a mentality of entrepreneurship. Mm. You understand? So the government has a role to play in enabling entrepreneurs to thrive. Okay, now let me let me bring you in. She talked about the fact that she talked about the fact that you need to carve a niche for yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to stand out and be peculiar with what you do. But how do you carve a niche in a market that is already, already saturated? Like we know fashion. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be a fa if I had the opportunity, I would be a fashion designer. Exactly. <laughs> but everybody wants to be a fashion designer. But how how as a business person or as a starter or a startup, how do you carve a niche for yourself in a market that you have a whole lot of people doing the same thing already? First and foremost, like I say, when you have passion, you don't. I, I, for me, competition does one thing for me. It motivates me. Mm -hmm. Where there's no competition, you understand. You, you're like a one-eyed uh, man in the land of the blind. Jonas, until you meet somebody with two eyes, you now discover that Omo, <laughs> it's better to have two eyes than one sure. eyes. So for me, it's um, it's not about the competition. Why competition is key? I want to do. I entered into some. A lot of people say. You know, I'm a fashion designer because I think I make a very good fashion designer because I know how to combine colors, I dress well, <laughs> you know, I know what it takes, I look good, I have the body. It takes a whole lot more than that. Just like she said, one question, why is there a need? So Number one question, what for what you want to do. Why are you doing it? If you can sincerely answer that question, you find out, well, I just felt that since, you know, I have I'm a lot fasting. of clothes. Yes, I've, you'll be shocked with the kind of questions I get. When I ask a lot of people this question, a lot will give me the same random answer. Eh, I just, I love looking good and, you know. <laughs> so you find out there's really no depth to their answer. Jonathan, so for me, the more, the better. Haven't you ever wondered, you enter into a fashion uh, 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 mall and you see like five, Different. seven people selling Different the same thing, thing. maybe yeah. boutique. But if you enter, if you take your time and enter each boutique, well, you will know the details. ones, yeah, they have different details, details. And you know the ones that are copying. You can easily tell, and you know the ones that have created a niche. As a fashion designer, you see somebody that deals only in chiffons. Mm -hmm. There's some people that only boo -boo. brocade. There's some people only broke. No matter the cloth, there's some people that have made up their mind, they will never collect cloth. They, they're just doing ready to wear. Mm -hmm. No matter how, they just say, don't worry, when we make it, just come and buy and go. Jonathan, they're not interested in any thing. So you look at the market. What, how do I intend to stand out? How do I intend to create a market for me in this already saturated market? Do you understand? And you go forward. And if the purpose is right, and if your intentions are right, trust me, it doesn't matter how many people in your business, you will stand out. The, the, sorry, there is something about competition that, that strikes me the most. Yes. In developed countries where, where, where you have so much competition, you have the bigger industries buying off. Like the case that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is currently facing, mm -hmm. trying, to buy off and, um, trying to buy off one of the one of the stores. Mm. Now, the problem in Nigeria is, where well, you have so many competition, yes, it is good, but the, is Nigeria op operating on, the, on, on an open economy system, on an open market, where everybody can try? Because if you're a big business and want to start, obviously, with her, influence, she, with, her, with her influence, she can stop my business How? if she wants. There are so many For businesses that are folded in Nigeria, let's not mention them, mm -hmm. but, are, but open competition is good. But in, is Nigeria operating an open market system enough that allows various competitions to try? Okay. Um, one, of course, we have the numbers, we have the population. So like mm -hmm. I said, 
<laughs> Once you're in the right business, there would always be a need for what you do. Mm. However, competition, the best way to deal with competition is to innovate. Mm. What is the difference between creativity and innovation? Mm. Creativity is, okay, I want to present this water in a different way. Water is everywhere, but I'm going to present my own in a different mm. way. Innovation is when you're doing something that has never been seen mm. before. Mm. Okay, I want to create a special kind of water that has vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, and you drink it and it cures cancer. Mm. That's different. Mm. Yeah. So innovation is mm. being able to cause a paradigm shift, mm. being able to break the status quo, do something that has never been done mm. before. And so I, I encourage entrepreneurs to be innovative, mm. take it beyond creativity. Yeah. When you are innovative, then competition lies far from you. Mm. Competition lies from you. You're mm. not bothered because you're on top. Mm. And it takes a, a lot for others to catch up with you. True. So I always, I don't even think about competition, to mm. be honest with mm. you, because I'm constantly trying, trying to, to reinvent my yourself. business, constantly trying to do something that has never been seen before. Because for me, that is the key to keep my customers and to keep them coming back. Mm.